research has identified specific patterns of dysbiosis in different autoimmune conditions. For example, in rheumatoid arthritis, there's often an increase in bacteria like Prevotella copri and a decrease in beneficial species like Bacobacterium pronitiae. In lupus, studies have shown reduced overall diversity in the microbiome and specific shifts that correlate with disease activity. For some of Sjogren's disease specifically, the oral microbiome is hugely important. Sjogren's causes dry mouth. Q-sip, which disrupts the oral ecosystem. That disruption increases the risk of oral infections, contributes to the increased rise in dental decay and cavities, gum disease, gingivitis, and likely contributes to an increase in systemic inflammation. Similarly, people with eczema or chronic sinusitis, often we, we are able to see on culture samples and in the research that their microbiomes look different than people who don't have these chronic inflammatory conditions. So when we talk about reclaiming your microbial balance, which is the second R of the immune competent framework, we're thinking holistically. It's not just about gut health. It's about all of your microbial ecosystems together. So that brings us to reclaim the second R of the immune competent framework. We need to think about changing this entire weather pattern. So what does that look like? First, it's feeding your good bacteria. The foundation is dietary fiber specifically diverse sources of fiber from whole plants. This may include fruits and veggies, of course, but also legumes, nuts, seeds, herbs, and spices. I often tell patients to aim for 30 different plants of plant foods per week, not 30 servings, 30 different types. This isn't about perfection though. We were talking about gradually increasing this variety. This is the goal. Sometimes we're starting way back at a different place and we need to be thoughtful about this because the reality is for many of us who have eaten a fiber de deficient diet for years and years, if we go from zero to 90, we're going to be miserable, especially if you have slow transit due to something called gastroparesis. So this has to be done with a very thoughtful framework and, and someone who understands how sometimes too much of a good thing is not a good thing. All right. Two, strategic use of prebiotics and probiotics. Probiotics can be helpful, especially in the short term, but they're most effective when combined with prebiotics. And there's actually more data to support the use of prebiotics, so certain fibers that feed your own bacteria. 